How do you say your last name? Uh, Bolentini. Bolent. Oh, uh, yeah, that's Italian. Oh, it's oh, very, uh, every, very. How you? Every time. You, yeah, that's one of those last names you gotta raise. <laughs> exactly, man. Those do martial arts like this too. <laughs> uh how you doing nick i'm doing well um i'm tired actually i just got done with um wushu oh is that isn't that the 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 hip man uh, uh is, i also did that this morning as well i have two different sifus i have a wing chun teacher oh that's Wing Chun, right yeah and then i have a wushu teacher which he also teaches me tai chi what's and the difference between them so wing chun is a like southern martial arts like southern uh shaolin it was uh invented by a woman actually and it's one of the um only martial arts that was invented by a woman and it's more about using like geometry and angles and uh it's more like scientific honestly oh wow so Wing Chun is uh, like Ip Man, yeah, like Donnie Yen, that's all Wing Chun, or mostly. They kind of throw in a little flashy moves. <laughs> look better, but but uh, yeah, my, my teacher, his Sifu was taught by Ip Chun, which is Ip Man's son. Oh, wow. So yeah, and then my Wushu teacher, um, he actually, uh, Sifu Najad, he um, founded the Iranian Wushu team. So he's from Iran, actually, of all places. If like the team is in Iran or is it? Yeah, they're still going today. Yeah, he's he's oh, that's amazing. The team there. Uh, he's the first. Um, what was it? He's the first non-Chinese to get his eighth dawn. So yeah, I got some good teachers. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, dude, that's amazing. Eight dawn eight. I didn't know there was more than five, but yeah, but it goes then a, again. It goes a nine apparently. So nine's like the highest one you can get. And like to do that, you have to like pretty much create a martial arts more or less to get the ninth done. You have to like pretty much make your own like martial arts, wow. basically. It's a lot of work. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't even know if this guy got in Bruce Lee. I don't he made his own. I don't even know if, he, if he's he, ninth on, but wasn't wasn't he about I'm the style of no style? Yeah, exactly, which is it's more of a wushu um, category for what we're talking about. His is like any style. It was mostly his style was based Jeet Kune Do. Mm -hmm. It was a uh, based off of Wing Chun. So like 80 or 90 percent of Jeet Kune Do is actually Wing Chun. And then the rest of it's kind of like mostly it's like fencing, a little bit of boxing and then just a little bit of grappling. Fencing? Like uh, yeah. with with the motion or the, the yeah, actual... very inspired by fencing like the, in fact the way you stand in jeet kune do is like your heels down and then your toes down so which is like a fence oh. to move back and forth yeah the okay interesting i never so knew that I, I i so it's like a like a quick punch so yeah it's just his is more about like a like just using your strengths instead of trying to be balanced which is good to be balanced as well but he's more about like hey if you're right-handed use your right hand like <laughs> that's amazing i so, never thought about it. it was in fencing but now that i think about it and i re you know i replay the films and his motions like i can see i can see this like the wow yeah, well, like well first of all please introduce yourself i uh, i'm not good at uh, introducing people okay. so please yeah, introduce I'm, yourself i'm uh i'm nick Bolantini. i'm from reno uh i've done i do stunts i do martial arts um, I, I, I do dance, actually, of all things. Uh, I've been making films recently, beginning in the filmmaking. Mm -hmm. So I've made a, a couple of martial arts films so far, just short films. I'm working on another one right now, which hopefully we'll film in September. And not only that, I'm also working on producing a movie as well. Oh, wow. Which won't, it won't be really, it might be action themed, has action elements to it, but uh, it'll have some fight scenes in it, but it's not going to be, based around martial arts, whereas the short films I do are 100% just martial arts and comedy. I love martial arts and comedy, the mix. So yeah, and then I play, I play soccer. I tried out for a pro team a while ago, so I'm pretty athletic. Made the first cut, showed it to the second tryout, and I looked around and I was like, man, these guys are good. Like, <laughs> 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 so, yeah, but I don't know, it was lucrative, it was good. 
for the time. I was a little past my prime when I tried, but the athleticism was there. So I was like, hey, like I do martial arts, I'm athletic. Like why don't I start doing some stunts? And lo and behold, here we are. I just, I was in a movie on Sunday last week, actually. Mm -hmm. So it's been paying off. Oh, wow. I mean, I know it's, I know it's been, it is not easy to do stunts and I've heard so many people just like just fall into I mean no pun, no pun intended but uh, <laughs> but they fall into it instead of like like aiming to oh I want to jump off a building and get punched for for a living you just fall into it I, I, yeah no actually this is a funny story uh I had an audition for a movie like it was actually a pilot for a movie. And I went in and I, I bombed my audition. I did so bad on my audition. I did not do a good job, mm -hmm. but I was wearing a Bruce Lee shirt. And uh, I, I got the script like maybe a day before. I was like, oh, I just like winged it, like whatever. I did, I did not do, but then I had a Bruce Lee shirt and like, hey, do you do martial arts? And I was like, yeah, heck yeah. So uh, I busted out some capoeira actually. I did some like flips and stuff, like some capoeira. And they're like, oh my God, we've been looking for this everywhere. Like, where have you been? And I was like, oh, uh, what? Like, But yeah, we want to hire you immediately. Like, is there anybody else like you? And I was like, actually, yeah, because I just so happened to like have some friends that also like do martial arts. And we just started doing movie stuff, kind of. And I was like, hey, guys, let's go be in a movie pilot. And then like ever since then, we pretty much have a stunt team now, like randomly. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> fits, fits, fits the, the, the story of uh, most people. That are in this it's just yeah i just suddenly uh, it's it's funny it's it's did you ever uh did you ever saw yourself doing stunts or action or anything like it or did you just roll with it i mean besides the fact that you were were in martial arts how did you how did you end up in making movies or was it a result of doing stunts how, how did you roll into it to be honest <laughs> It kind of started off as like Napoleon Dynamite, like kind of like, oh yeah, like look at me, how cool I am. Like, oh yeah, I'm doing Kung Fu. Uh -huh. And I'm like, I was just kind of silly at first, like whatever. And then like, eventually I was like, what? you know, I'm actually getting kind of good at being dumb. Like what if I actually got good at it instead? So I started doing like real martial arts and I was like, wow, actually I'm, I'm athletic. I'm pretty good at this. And so just the beginning kind of like messing around we like i'd like film like my friends and me just being like oh yeah stunts like hot rod all just silly like just funny and then like it got more serious as time went on because we were like wanted to do cooler things and we we're just like hey like let's make it real like why are, why are we doing the silly stuff like if we're gonna make it silly like let's make it real silly like so but yeah so that's pretty much amazing so basically your film school was trial and error Oh yeah, a thousand, <laughs> a thousand percent. It still is too. <laughs> That's amazing. It's it's also it's also very. It, I mean, film school is important. I think to at least to to, to have a grasp of the technical part for the beginning and to know the, the antics of the set. But it's amazing how much the best teacher. I mean, in most things, especially in creative things, is you cannot teach creativity. You can only teach a creative person how to use tools which you did my, uh, yourself, right? My Wing Chun teacher, he gets mad at me all the time because like Wing Chun is very simple. It's just straight line punch. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, but what if I did like this crazy, like it's going to look so cool on camera. And he's like, no, <laughs> like just do, just do Wing Chun, just punch him. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, you know, it's boring, but it's more efficient. Like it's A to B is the shortest distance between A and B is a straight line. But if you do like, I don't know, Capoeira, you want to make it all look all like flashy and gonna take a long time for that kick to come in though you're gonna get yeah. hit in the meantime unless you do something else that's actually it's actually interesting that you say that because Wing Chun is very direct right very like yes. the shortest the shortest distance the hand can do towards the target that, that that's basically it right there yeah that, and then elbows yeah exactly like so if you fold it up you just want to like unfold yeah. pretty much like so yeah exactly how how was How was translating that type of movement to 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 camera to make it look you know cinematic beautiful it's it's actually kind of fun because like like i said like some martial arts are actually very like good martial arts is actually very boring to watch because it's so clean it's mm -hmm. just like one hit like or maybe like more like uh, like 10 hits tops done 
like that's boring you want the action you want to be drawn out and so it's kind of interesting to see like what moves aren't the most effective on purpose so you're like like you're using still mar real martial arts but you're making it less efficient which is kind of like a difficult task to do but uh it's fun to put the moves together that would never go together like capoeira and wing chun are like complete opposites yeah so it's fun to be like oh like capoeira like spin move and then just come out like directly into wing chun like that's that's crazy it looks cool it's that's fun like putting them together but you would never do that in like a real fight though so it's like <laughs> it's just fun to um be able to string moves together that normally wouldn't go together uh -huh. and like see how they fit it's like legos kind of yeah 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 but what i was asking specifically was the challenge of translating short movement to a suspenseful sequence right because you need to you need to broadcast and extend in order for the thing look cinematic at least because yeah. nobody nobody fights in tv like they fight in real life nobody broadcasts that much movement. fighting yeah you want like big uppercut yeah. like very especially nowadays marvel movies you want like oh look at me in the air flying like very big motions yeah like in a real fight if i'm gonna do a really big motion i'd already been hit yeah. like, by the time i even was halfway <laughs> so it, like you have to make sure that the other person is ready to do the correct move otherwise if you're gonna do wing chung like i have a friend right now actually that's who i'm working on the film with his name's uh -huh. ty um he does shaolin martial arts which mixes very well with wing chung mm -hmm. and um it's just kind of cool because he like actually like sometimes it's like when i'm with somebody they don't know what they're doing i'm like oh so like i have to show them so much so much stuff mm -hmm. he like already knows stuff and it surprises me so sometimes we'll just freestyle for a little bit and then just like, oh, that's 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 awesome. What'd you just do? All right, let's let's add that in. Like that, that was cool. Like that was that was real. Like it blocks you from actually getting hit. Like, let's put that in. Like, so that's the way we kind of like iron it out a little bit. It's helpful when you have other people with experience. Yeah, yeah, that's definite. I I I tried to do something in martial arts on 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 the, on like a film in martial arts short, and it was my biggest. The best film school I've ever had. I went to film school, but that was the best film school I've ever had. And also it was one of the biggest failures of like, I wouldn't say failures, but it wasn't it wasn't a big success. But that's so important to bring people to understand it because it's such a it's such a different medium to have act to make action, to create action, to create that that suspense on screen. It's not it's not dialogue it's physical dialogue it's physical communication yes, yes. and uh, that's and i do feel that there's not enough representation in festivals or anywhere that's why i'm actually doing this oh and, that's uh, did you are you I, I what like who are your inspect i'm wondering what like who is your inspiration in terms of like the way you film because just another day in Reno is very, very different. It's very Marx. So I, I did that on purpose. I wasn't inspired by like anybody, honestly. I just wanted to make like something that stuck out like a sore thumb, whereas like you can't ignore it because it's just so off the wall, like wacky. And like, honestly, I think we've hit the mark pretty well. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like, only, like I just wanted to make something that people would remember and that would just make them laugh. Cause it was also when I made that, it was coming right off of COVID. Mm -hmm. So like it was all depressing and everybody's all like oh like we're stuck inside oh man like so i was like man i just want to make something that makes people laugh like and then like, just energy and stuff like uh that yeah it was a lot of fun to make too actually we every we all get together every once in a while and talk about it like it was like one of the more fun like projects we've done how, how did it all come like how did it how did the, how did you how did the idea come to you like what how did you come <laughs> yeah. up with it it's actually a funny question because uh I was literally in the shower just like thinking I was like huh you know be like a cool idea for a short film just like me getting beat up by a girl <laughs> and then it was like all right well why don't I just make this something silly out of that and then just uh, from there literally I, I remember it too I was literally just like in the shower just like thinking like early in the morning before work one day I was like yeah actually this is a great idea let's go with it why not and then uh, so glad. then my stunt double is actually my cameraman so he's or he's my photographer so all the like any pictures I take, it's usually him. So like I was already just like, hey, like in his ear about like making a short film, and I was like, oh, I'll just include him too. And then that's pretty much like 
it was born right there. And how long, how long did it take from idea to, to the cut? Mm, it probably took like, mm, cause we had a, a lot of practice actually, man, we practiced maybe like at least 30 or 40 full hours for like two minutes of action scene. <laughs> um, probably took about four months, four or five months. Four or five months. Was it, was it included with the camera and, uh, and, the, and the person who would be using the camera or, like, or were doing privies or were just... Actually, we filmed that in one day because that was all we had. So we did that very quick, like shotgun. Like, so the whole uh -huh. thing we filmed in just one day. And then the editing process maybe took about two or three extra weeks. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was about four or five months. And in the preparation, did you actually prepare privises or were you, did you just rolled with it? How, how? So we, uh, most of it, we came up with like on the, like beforehand, like almost like we had like this really janky scripts cause we kept revising everything constantly. And then um, even the day of, we were like revising stuff just because uh, we were pressed for time. And so we had to like get different angles, which actually comes back to what you're talking about earlier like us uh, the angles you have can actually um, make things look like more strong than they really are so say you're like punching like straight if you come from like the back of the head it looks like they're getting knocked way back but really you're just like stopping right here yeah so yeah. we just had to come up with like on the spot more angles because we weren't like prepared for some things because there's so there's so much that goes into it but uh no 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 i want to like, hear so we uh, had a film permit and it was literally like right next door for where we actually filmed uh -huh. but it didn't, it didn't go through in time so we like went and knocked on the door of like this the cafe that was like right there and we're like hey can we film just right here and they're like yeah totally it so happens i uh it was, it was a family friend and they're just like yeah totally you want to set up right now and we're like yeah actually that'd be awesome because we were like we're supposed to film here but we didn't get like a lot of crazy junk happen and so we just Shotgun it right there, just went in the little <laughs> patio area. I'm like, man, that's why we had so much fun doing it though, too, because it was like so much just like creativity on the spot instead of just being like, oh, it has to be like this. Like it was had more leadway for more fun and like just everybody was like more happy and the um like laughing, like the the comedy came off like way better because of it, I think. It's it's amazing that you said it because first of all, it does look like you are all having fun. <laughs> yeah it, it does it does it, it does translate on the screen and like our our festival director for example uh marshall he really really like he loved your movie uh out of everything he, your, yours was his <laughs> wow. favorite just because it was so different it was so it was so other it was so different which kind of surprised me because it has so many elements that oh this is a, but like you're telling me so it's it, it kind of it's kind of funny how some creative thoughts resemble others without even meaning it. Oh man, exactly. right? I'll tell you, you know, it's a good idea too when it translates over to other places. Yeah, and sometimes like the, the same idea in different language or different culture are made exactly the same because some elements, especially the slapstick part, <laughs> is always the same. And it was so, it was so, again, I, I, I cannot describe the, the reaction people that had to your to your shore, it was it was like it was laughing out loud, laughing out loud, laughing out loud, laughing out loud. And, that's and it was it was so much fun because you're always is afraid to slate a movie like that because it's it's an awkward movie. Come on. Oh yeah, oh yeah, a thousand percent. That's what I remember. Sore thumb. That's what I was going for. So exactly. But uh, yeah, and uh, I'm I'm so happy that people are brave enough to make stuff like that and 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 do get out of their comfort zone and to make do make some silly silly out of themselves and the, the material they're making right so yeah i have a, a fun fact for you too my foot was actually broken when we filmed that what yeah my toe was broken on my left foot and i didn't even know because i just hurt really bad and then i was doing another stunt and i smashed my heels pretty good i got uh contusions in both my heels and I went in to get an x-ray and they're like, hey, your foot's broken. I was like, oh no, my heels. And they're like, actually it's your toe. And I was like, <laughs> what? That's why I hurt so bad before. <laughs> so it's healed, it's healed up now finally, but while we were filming, yeah, my foot was broken. So that's, a, well, yeah, you are a stunt person. Exactly. You guys are crazy. 
after it was released too like five months later like oh yeah it's an old fracture but it, yeah it's there i was like so i'm part of the industry i guess so, so you're doing stunts right now um pretty much and i'm more doing my own stuff right now i was like i said i was just in a movie though on sunday it's called a uh, target list that was like one of the first things i've actually done that doesn't have anything to do with martial arts oh wow it was weird to show up on set and not like have to stretch and like <laughs> like get ready <laughs> to like do something like i mean i was doing stuff but like yeah. there's more dialogue which is which is nice i was like oh i get to like just hang out this is great like <laughs> What is your next project about? What's that? What is your next project about? So the next project, it doesn't even have a title yet. It's more of like a buddy cop kind of movie or short film. It's going to oh. be more, more of an action scene than a short film. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll even break it down. So it's going to be me and my friend, the Shaolin guy, Ty. Mm -hmm. like, we're going to wake up like back to back. Um, ideally like in a still mill. It's like, or like a of warehouse type of area and i'll we'll be tied up and i'll be like oh you always get these uh, some these type of situations and i'll be like and oh, no, i'm gonna get us out of it and then just like like get out of the rope or whatever and be like walking away and then just have some probably gonna have it be i'll, I'll break it down for you too because this is actually really interesting if i have it be ninjas just so we can cover their faces <laughs> but you'll see i'll tell you why so like have him come out of nowhere and like swing like a piece of rebar and like dodge it and then just like we're back to back and then just like now there's like 15 20 dudes like ninjas and then it's just us just going john wick on them just like just just bam like all of our best moves just taking them out like i want it to literally be like more action this time than comedy maybe like a little bit of comedy but more action and like the opposite of just another day in reno pretty much i mean ninjas in the warehouse is kind of funny exactly so i was like but the only reason <laughs> we're doing that is because it's hard to find people that know what they're doing so if we cover up their faces, then me and my friend or me and Ty can like can wear a ninja costume and then pretend to be somebody else when we're fighting and then be literally doing the stun double and the actual. How do you plan something like that? Like how do you how do you basically break down an approach like that when you both need to be on screen at some point and then also be a double to one of the people that get that get their asses kicked? Oh, exactly. That's yeah, it's gonna be tough. So it's like we're gonna have to have separate scenes. And then we're still gonna have to have people there, like in ninjas costumes, but they won't necessarily be doing a lot of the fighting. They'll just be like getting smacked and like flying off screen or like getting kicked and, uh, and like just collapsing like right there. But then, okay. but then that way we can have them in the background when like, say he's dressed up and he's fighting me, like we'll have like those guys in the background, but then it'll mostly be just us fighting. And then you switch scenes and then it looks like a new person came in, but really it's just him again. Cause he just switched the angle. Yeah. And then he looks like it's a different guy, but really it's just him again or vice versa. It'd be just me again. And then we'll go back and maybe we'll have like a double scene where like I'll like jump over him or he'll like flip over me or something. And then like still have like just regular people for that. And then just like go back to us again. So the best way to film that would be to do all the ninja stuff kind of like more at once. And then all of the regular person stuff like at once and then see where it makes it. So then that way you don't have to keep dressing up, like switching costumes going back and forth but then after that you have to watch it all because if we do keep switching we have to make sure that it, like we can't tell it's us there's a lot of other there's a lot of factors that would would go into that as well so you might have to dress up again but it's just best to get the bulk of it so in that way it's like less wardrobe so to speak <laughs> so to speak yeah <laughs> no it's, it sounds that sounds exciting but like i i sometimes I sometimes have a hard time to wrap myself, my head around things like that, like the amount of breaking down of the whole thing that goes into it. You know, the storyboarding and the choreography and the, well, the previous, 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 previous. So uh, that sounds, that sounds exciting. I cannot wait to see it now. So I, the way, this is the way I do it. I don't, there's probably so many different techniques like out there, but I always just think of uh, camera angles first. Okay. Like before anything, like, so if it's like, this is the camera angle, what um, move is going to look cool from that angle and be like, okay, how do we build the story from there then? And then like, okay, so now the camera angles here, like what move is going to look cool from there? Like what just happened before to get to where we are now, mm -hmm. like camera angle wise. And then like, 
I don't like so I don't, at least have like a concept first of like what you want the story to be and then introduce camera angles so I guess that would be first would be the concept and then the camera angles and then you can kind of build out like the characters and development from there because then you include the environment as well and then just other factors that you wouldn't normally think of because then you're like oh wait now so third person like angle like huh like so like, yeah like say there's like a pool table or something like in the scene like now you can introduce like pool sticks or pool balls like being thrown or like hit or what like it's just something you might not necessarily think about like or like a bar scene or something like when you go there and then you actually show up on location when it's on paper like oh yeah cool and you show up on location and say there's like a foot closer to the wall than you thought now you can't do like a crazy move with a stick where you're like trying to swing it or yeah something. so now you got to improvise a little bit so camera angles there like yeah it gets it gets pretty deep so so you also do like basically uh you 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 do stunt coordinating that sounds like stunt coordinating stuff so mostly yeah mostly do uh let's just put I'll, put I'll put it this way i do martial arts choreography that's a good one yeah i like we, that we call it film foo <laughs> <laughs> actually there is a guy in uh, in vancouver who has a uh I don't know if it's still running. Uh, film Foo is uh, it's is uh, the name of a festival. So it does short films oh, that man. are related to it. So his name is Kier Cortier, I think. He's uh, he's uh, one of the more renowned stunt people, uh, stuntmen here in uh, here in Canada. Uh, that's exciting, man. It's like sounds like, and you basically uh, what I'm mostly amazed out of is the fact that you you're teaching yourself when you're growing into it by trial and error more than anything it's like it's it's out it's 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 admirable i mean that's that's a that's like true art in my opinion because you can learn art in a classroom and then you can go repeat it and like how's that art though it's like you didn't create it you just repeated something like <laughs> So it's like obviously it's like there really aren't a whole lot of new ideas martial arts that's been around way longer than i've been alive like any of us mm -hmm. so it's like how do you take something that's been around and also make it creative and it's like you can't really learn that in a classroom because that's what's being taught to everybody so if you like if you're doing it yourself like you're learning your way it might be the same way as the classroom maybe you'll come up with the same answer but if you do it yourself you're going to come up with a completely different answer if you're not doing it how everyone else is learning yeah you do it a little bit different you do this but from here not here and you do However, it could be um lacking in a way because maybe there's something in the classroom that you're missing that's like so obvious because it's taught to everybody and then you're doing it yourself and it's like oh how could i not have thought of that like it's so obvious like <laughs> <laughs> i don't i don't know i i find i find that it's it's more i'm trying to i'm trying to i'm trying to translate from hebrew to, to english now but i do find that it's more it's more evident that people who do this regardless their knowledge it, it's basically passion right and you put above it a knowledge and experience and you get somebody who is good at what they do and will never be bored out of it because it's not a job it's a passion like not only that like when it's a when it's a passion like you just put so much of yourself into it too so then like there's like people like oh there's no like maybe monetary reward like depending on the project or whatever it's like that's not what it's all about though if you're trying to make true art like i said i wanted to make people laugh like that's the whole reason i made just another day in reno like i wouldn't do it for money at all like in fact i paid out of pocket from for just another day in reno just because i wanted to make art i want to make people laugh and then i want to showcase martial arts it's like i love philosophy i have a degree in philosophy as well oh wow so and psychology and like that's like the whole like reasoning behind even making films is to like introduce people into a different way of thinking that's interesting where did you go to school uh the university of reno it's where i live actually in nevada isn't isn't reno yeah isn't Reno, you know where I heard about Reno first time? But well, we'll get back to it before that. So wait, you went to psychology and philosophy and somehow you ended up doing stunts. That's, yes, pretty much. So what were you, what were you aiming to do before that? Like what, what was your, you, did you have trajectory or did you just go to school to learn? Um, 
well, I kind of didn't want to become a psychologist. And then I realized that like, I could potentially have more of an impact making films oh. and martial arts, which is like martial arts is pretty much just philosophy. If you want to break it down, if you, if you like pay really close attention, it's all just philosophy. It's not even fighting. And so that's like a really good medium actually to teach on film right there as well. Mm -hmm. So it all just kind of like bled together and like in my mind, and I was like, I could easily heal people potentially using film, being even just being silly and having fun, like just that alone, like, like it made people laugh. Like that's a rare thing in today's world is to be able to laugh, especially at yourself. <laughs> <laughs> if you can, if you have know, the, exactly. yeah, the, the virtue of uh, lack of ego which is good. No, it's, that's amazing. Good. Like it's, it's so cool. Philosophy and psychology. And yeah, I do stunts. It's, what you don't do? Kind of oh, so, sorry. It's kind of, it's kind of random, right? <laughs> it's, it's very random. It's, but that's again, it's, it's a repeat itself. It's so interesting that it repeats itself in the stunt community that people don't really become, people don't, aim to become stunt people they just they just become stunt people out of whatever happens or they become filmmakers well that's that's a different thing because we all we all influenced by early age but were you like what were you like, what was your influence in your early age because i was i was i grew up on van damme oh, i can yeah. basically recite all of his movies the bad <laughs> ones the good ones and the really really bad ones so like what 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 was how what what were you influenced from mostly i mean I'm wearing them right now this guy yeah of course was, like literally philosophy and martial arts like he was like the king of it uh-huh so in my mind bruce lee is a philosopher first and a martial artist second mm -hmm. like that like literally i and like i didn't really avidly start following Bruce Lee until I got a little bit older but as I've like learned more about him I found out he just like represented more and more of my ideals because I was already deeply into philosophy and I was um, I started with capoeira that was my first martial arts which was it's more dancing and it's not really a uh, fighting which is like fun and like that's really good that's also great for psychology it, like it's kind of like introduced me into the world of martial arts in like a positive view So just like very fun and like uplifting, dancing and like doing flips, singing. And then I got more interested in martial arts in general. And I was like, oh, wow, this is not all dancing and singing <laughs> and, fun, and fun. And I was like, that's interesting, though. Like, look at how crazy these guys are. They're doing like crazy flips, like monkey style, drunken style. They're like, I was like, that's like really incredible, like athleticism. And so I started looking at them more and I was like, oh, wow, this, this is all like like Taoism pretty much like most of it's like Buddhism and Taoism like what just the philosophies behind learning martial arts and I was like that's crazy like so it's actually relates to philosophy just the way you approach it and I was like huh so then it got me even more into martial arts and then that's kind of where we're at now so what do you mean uh, Buddhism and Taoism and in what way specifically oh, especially Tai Chi like just uh like push and pull like uh give and take just uh i don't know like the movements even it's very similar so even like wing chung if you want to push and pull or like if you want to punch you're actually pulling with this hand so you're grabbing and then pulling so it's very equilibrium and balance which is a very taoist concept mm -hmm. and not only that especially wing chung um Taoism's like hey if you believe in other religions that's awesome that's cool but here's this information though and then that's what Wing Chun's kind of like it's mm -hmm. like if you want to believe in other martial arts that's totally cool but here's like the fundamentals here and if you want to do other stuff that's great it'll actually bleed into it but here's the actual like soup like right here so that's interesting it, it was just that's cool like it wasn't like none of it is ever like official like It's just like, this is the closest to the answer that we have. Like, even like a punch, like it's probably the best answer to like for self-defense is just a straight punch. Like, and if it connects, yeah, awesome. But there might be even a more efficient answer than that. It's just that for that scenario, that was the most efficient answer at the time. And it could change constantly. The answer is always changing. It's never, a straight punch isn't going to work every single time. 
Yeah, yeah. So it, I, I did. I actually did feel that. Uh, so I went a little bit for martial arts when I was a kid, and it really affected me in perspective because I was getting stronger and more flexible, and at the same time my desire to fight was decreasing. I was a kid, I was like 16, 15. I wasn't, I wasn't a troublemaker or anything, but my desire to fight or my anger to fight or my will to prove myself was decreasing. And I found it fascinating why, even at that age, why was I was less prone to violence when I'm so exposed to violence. And I think that's like one of the, I bet you can explain about it better from a psychological perspective because you actually took the elements of psychology you learned and you implement them in martial arts, right? It's actually, it's, it seems counterintuitive, but it's not. It's, it's all Buddhism and Taoism, like, is the same, has the same philosophies and ideas. It's like, a, if, like, as Bruce Lee says it, it's like, you, you have to be big when your opponent gets small and you have to be small when your opponent gets big. So it's kind of like the give and take again, yet again. So when you're putting more aggression out, like you're, you're actually getting aggression out by like practicing aggression. So you're like, oh, like, you know, like whatever doing your like forms or like everything you're like, so then you are done and you're like, oh, I got all the aggression out. I don't feel the need to do that. And you witness the violence that you're capable of or that your Sifu or somebody else is capable of. And you're like, wow, I really never want to see this done on anybody or see anybody do this to somebody. Like, as you know what, like, it could actually happen. You're like, wow, like, someone's school could get cracked open and then nobody's having fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, nobody's having fun with that. But that's, that's, the, that's the beautiful part about this. It's the, I mean, also, like, even on sets, I mean, going back to even stunts, those are the, like, the stunt, as much as they're the strongest, like, coolest people, not even with the air bracket, they're the coolest people. They are, they are also the most calm, most generous, uh, like group that I've met on sets this far. I don't know, I might be, I might be proven differently in the future, hopefully not, but uh, it's amazing how the element of physical expression, whether it's uh, trained violence or trained violence on screen, makes you more uh, at peace or more uh, like a level like how do you explain that kind of thing right it's also a confidence thing mm -hmm. as well because you're like know that you're capable of violence and so <laughs> like, if anybody's gonna mess with me like that's that's a bad idea on their end like but you're more comfortable with it though instead of being like oh no stop oh, like you're all like afraid you'd be like all right like <laughs> this is what you want, like, sure. <laughs> like, instead of being, yeah, it's like when you're like, stop, no, don't, it's like your heart's like beating, oh, like, like oh, very rigid. Mm -hmm. And if you're relaxed too, like, you can't fight when you're rigid. It's like, oh, like you're gonna get yanked all over the place. Like if you're relaxed, like even just like, this is like a Fuk Sao and uh, Wing Chun, it's like just very relaxed. Like, it's just, yeah, <laughs> very simple. And uh, there's, a, what, what is like, do you basically, so it's like when someone punches at you, you're like blocking it, like you're pretty much grabbing it and then you would come to the side and then their punch would come through and then you'd be able to come back. So it's, oh. it's like, so you're like catching the punch with this kind of and then guiding it off of your center and then coming back onto their center. You're, you're like a muscle or something. Your hip for it too. So you want to, it's like the one inch punch actually comes from this. It's the same thing. So it's just like the hip. So technically you could actually do, that is the one inch punch technically. So it's here, yeah. like, it's like different arm, but like, it's like kind of similar. Yeah, you create the vacuum and you fill it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, that's a perfect example. It's like a, um, like, oh, I forget, like a, when you crash a car, the bag. The ripples, uh, the, the, no, car. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Sure, exactly. That's sure, that, the, yeah. the thing that explodes in your face. Exactly. Yeah, we know what we're talking about. Airbags. Yes. Air, thank you. Yes. Boom. Ask the immigrant about English. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of the, like, one of the best things that ever happened with this is to understand, like, with the with 
with this festival that, and with the exposure to stunt people and stunt performers and more, more martial artists and more perspective is to understand how hard it is to maintain and how hard it is to get in it. You know, like a lot of people fall in, fall in it, but like to stay in it, what it takes not to get injured. And that's something I'm always curious to know because there is not only one perspective on it, there's not only one way to be able or capable to do that kind of stuff. So I'm wondering, how do you, how do you maintain your body? How do you maintain the staying and doing stunts? How do you, how do you do that? I train six days a week and then I can even break down my schedule for you just so you can like, so I, I work, I work full days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Monday nights I'll go from, from work to Wing Chun. And then from Wing Chun, I started doing sword fighting classes now. It's actually Italian style sword fighting, which is pretty cool. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, oh, Italian martial arts, man, I didn't know that existed. This is great. Like, this is my martial arts now. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, That's cool. <laughs> like, yeah. I, will, so. I want you to get back to it after. I want to know more about it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So then Tuesday is I wake up Wing Chun in the morning with my Sifu. I go to work for a few hours. And then I go to yoga because that's like the most important thing is stretching. If I was going to quit everything, I would keep yoga. Like if I quit all my martial arts, I would still keep yoga. Like no matter what, if I had to like keep one thing, I would just do yoga. Interesting. Just because of like, you needed the stretch, like the flexibility and stretching to do all the other stuff pretty much. That's like the glue. So, so Wing Chun work, yoga. Um, I just recently started MMA fighting now or like training. I haven't really done fighting, but I've been doing training. So with, mm -hmm. uh, um, Sinjin Smith, he's a pro MMA fighter, actually. He's had 10 professional fights and he's won every single one. So another part is surrounding yourself with experienced people because that will take you so far. And um, then after that, I go to an acting class. And then after the acting class, I go to sword fighting again. <laughs> and that's Tuesday. So then Wednesday is work all day. And then I go to ballet, actually. I do ballet. So ballet, and then right after ballet, I go sparring. So I'll do sparring right after ballet. And I usually spar against like Taekwondo, like karate guys that are here in town. They have like an oh. open, open dojo on Wednesday nights. So then Thursday is Wing Chun in the morning, work, Wing Chun again, uh, Tai Chi, and then um, stunt class. We have a stunt class actually that we started. Oh, wow. So yeah, that's Thursday. Is, is that your class or you just go to work? Uh, not really. I mean, I help kind of, but it's mostly like uh, Amber Martial Arts is like putting it on. And then I kind of came in and like helped with like the camera angles and stuff like that, like the filming side of it. Mm -hmm. But they teach um, stunts there, like most, mostly tricking and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. But some of those guys there do stuff I can never do. Like they'll do like 540, like front flip, tucked man like <laughs> I can't, I can't the names are crazy like yeah they'll be like arabians and stuff like that's that's pretty sweet like, how do you feel about those by the way because when i watch so when i watch that kind of stuff i'm like oh this is so beautiful on screen but then i'm like but the practicality of this is like do you do you able are you able to do, do, like this also disassociate the martial artist in you and enjoy the the well the, the physical uh, aspect of the fights. It's funny that you asked that because I'm not super. Uh, I don't. My air game is not very good when it comes to martial arts. I like the ground a lot, especially capoeira, like close to the ground, doing flips on the ground and stuff. Oh yeah, all day. That's I'm all about that. When it comes to air stuff, it's like I said, it's funny because like I've, I spar people and like they're crazy they could do crazy flips and stuff but i still hold my own like pretty well sparring wise so it's like that like none of the flips came in handy when it actually came down to sparring each other mm -hmm. like actually fighting another thing is when you jump up in the air if you stand like right underneath you don't even need to do anything they're just 
Yeah, exactly, <laughs> like, exactly. Like you just like push a little bit and like the whole equilibrium's off while they're in the air. And then... Yeah, like you see somebody does like a 720 with a, with a Mawashige in the end. And like you get, you put your back against in, in front of me twice before you kick. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful to see and it's, it's I, mean, I admire people who manage to do that. It. Yeah, it looks great. Like it looks amazing, but then you watch it and but would I use it in a fight? No. But then again, I've never been into a fight, so who knows? Yeah, there's a joke. It's like those moves you use in a fight when after you already won the fight and the guy's just... <laughs> finish him. <laughs> and you do <laughs> somebody, yeah. uh, uh, somebody comes out of the crowd and says flawless victory after you do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was, it's, yeah. It's yeah. wobbling. Yeah. <laughs> That's what so what, what, what is that uh, mar Italian martial arts you were talking about? Um, or sword brazo, fencing? Brazo, I believe. Brazo. A brazo. A bra okay. Yeah, I'm not too sure I'm on the name of it because the actual martial arts is different than the sword style. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's called a brazo, and then it's it's very like fist, like hammer fists. Like it actually looks a lot like they did a really good job um, with uh, Ezio. It looks like Assassin's Creed. Like I'm not even joking. Ezio Auditore, like the way that he was fighting was actually a lot like a brazo. I was like, man, that's pretty mm. cool. Like very like fists and like heavy like swings, kind of like taking their sword away and like hitting. A lot of it's a lot of it's taking the sword and like actually like it's it's like you're using weapons while you fight, but you're not actually. So like you always pretend like you are with this fighting style. So it's like taking their sword and hitting them with your sword, but really it's like a punch kind of. Wow. I I never knew that like there was a martial arts in, in or I mean, I, I bet there's every, uh, I would say every nation has some type of uh, either martial arts or a, or a war technique that was used, you know, in their military or whatever, but I've never, I was never aware of that called a HEMA, it stands for something, H-E-M-A. Um, I, I, I totally forget. <laughs> yeah, it's, I've been I, I'm learning the moves, but I, like I'm starting to learn the classroom stuff, which is like, ah, I don't want to learn the classroom, but that's actually very important as well. So I'm just starting to get around to that. <laughs> but um, there's also a thought, so. German style, which is to the side. So Italian style is like fantasy kind of style where it's like in front of you, like Aragon, like, uh -huh. the, and then Germans more here. So we don't get your arms cut, but then this is closer to their face. So there's advantages and disadvantages. And then there's a uh, rapier, which is like a uh, more yeah. fancy kind of. So I mean, those are just the styles I've been learning that they teach here in Reno. Are you going to implement some sort of play in your next film or are you uh, thinking about it? Maybe if so, it would be very small amounts. Uh, Ty, my friend I've been telling you about, he's really good with Shaolin sword. He was a broadsword and like he does like crazy stuff with that thing. He's pretty good. Like, so it, it's possible. But as of right now, I think we're going more hand to hand stuff and then doing like more like tricking kind of like kicks and like, but what I want to do is kind of make it like a hybrid, like what we were just talking about, where it's like real and it's still like tricking. So it'll be like a less beautiful, so to speak, but it'll still have like some spin movements to it and be more realistic, like hitting. Because like, I'll even show you like, so here's this, this is a wuxia move. It's mm -hmm. like a double fist. You can make like make it smaller pow, instead. So like, it's kind of like that, but then like think of like a trick in the air where it's like really big, but then you make it like smaller, but then it's, it still looks cool. It's not as cool, but it's effective. I can, I can see it. I can even see it with a spin large and then small and then larger than small and like, like longer movements, shorter movements, close counter long. Yeah, no, I can see what you mean. I, I'm curious to see it. I mean, I think I can see what you mean. I'm not, uh, not that good in mind reading, but, <laughs> dude that's amazing i i find i first of all i got i got tired just to hear about your schedule it's amazing it's like yeah i didn't even finish it either but that's it, okay. <laughs> you know what if you finish it i'm definitely gonna be on the floor okay. hyperventilating so that <laughs> how about this bit last thing i say so today is saturday mm -hmm. i had wing chung and then wushu and then i came now i'm here with you 
So, well, thank you for you know putting the time to do this and not some more <laughs> training. That's amazing. Right? <laughs> do you rest ever? I was like, do you, you have uh, one of the? You probably can eat a lot and never gain oh, weight, man. right? You one like, of those people, right? All right, doing all this stuff is just showing up. That's half of it is just showing up. All right, cool. Getting the food <laughs> and eating. That's the that's the hard part is eating enough. What do you mean? Oh man, because like I gotta eat so much. I gotta have like three or four thousand calories at least, like a day. Oh wow. And then just doing the implementing that plus going places. So you have to have food made before or know where you're gonna get your food from throughout the day. So you have to kind of schedule my schedule is based around actually me going to eat more than a day. <laughs> that i need the food for <laughs> oh my god yeah actually actually that is that is uh that's usually how like professional athleticism is right you gotta intake you gotta control your intake in the same time control the 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 training and recovery and sleep and everything it's just amazing man it's like nice to do what you do is it's as nice as i do so much is i don't I don't care how much I eat or what I eat. Almost. I mean, better is healthier is better, but I just got to eat. It's just so much. I just like, oh, hey, look, food. Mm. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm envious. I haven't had pizza for three years, man. Oh, geez, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, no. uh, cardio. It's, it all comes down to cardio at the end of it. Ah, oh, cardio. I miss cardio. But we're not going to get into my health issues. <laughs> um But no, it's it's amazing, man. I, again, I'm, I I find I find like people who are able to focus the way you do and implement their and manage their time to actually achieve what they want. I I I personally can't wait to see what you do next. So hey, dude, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm nervous and excited to see because, like I said, I'm going more action now, and my I, my forte is comedy. I love comedy, mm -hmm. so it's like. You know, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to pull out the action uh, routes now instead. So, so what, uh, what, uh, what is, so you said you also are making, working on a feature film. Yes. Uh, is that something you are, can talk about right now or, or is it still uh, under wraps? I'll mention it, but I won't talk a lot about it, but um, that one's going to be funny. Like I want that one to be super funny, like hilarious. Like everyone's invited to this party too. So it's going to be like, you know, I was talking about ninjas earlier. It's going to be like ninjas, like Vikings, like, I don't care, like Venus Williams, <laughs> like Charlie Chaplin, <laughs> Johnny Cash. I don't know. Everybody, everybody's invited to this movie, like to be in, like, it's just going to be a silly, like cowboys, uh, astronauts. Like just, I want it to be just everything, like on purpose, like just, a spaghetti western but like sci-fi martial arts comedy i don't yeah it's gonna be intense so i'll put it i'll put it that way this is a working title too i'll give you a working title it's just actually really funny because what we're talking about it's um, gonna be once upon a time in reno oh <laughs> i see i see i see a reoccurring uh, uh theme there's a reason why too i'm choosing that like I'll, so it's going to be about making the short film just another day in reno mm -hmm. which is a very small subplot but to so it's gonna be super meta as well it's gonna be like very meta and then so like the actors are gonna be like oh we need to find out information about reno like blah blah if we're gonna make this short film just another day in reno which is gonna be the action my, my literally it's gonna be literally the just another day in reno so uh they're going to be like, oh yeah, cool. So let's go find out like about Reno's past. And then they'll go to like, a, like old Western, like there's Virginia city is very close. Uh -huh. um, Reno is very like, what, like Western style here. It's a lot of mm -hmm. desert. Um, it's like, in fact, I don't know if you've played a uh, red dead redemption I haven't. Dead in like Carson city and Reno is like right next to each other. So it's the, the, wet. the only reference I have from Reno is Retagar Howard playing a blind guy trying to save a kid and he's using a sword. But it's called Blind Vengeance, if I'm not mistaken. It's a movie from the 80s. I haven't seen it, no. Dude, it's one of the best <laughs> 80s action. It's so cheesy. He's blind, but he can cut a bee in the air. <laughs> okay. it's, dude, I'm telling you, it's great. It's And, this, and I gotta say, as much as the concept that the idea is somewhat ridiculous on the but it's 80s the 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 
execution of it in terms of the sword play, in terms of the, the, the fight scenes, in terms of the choreography is, is just, it's amazing. Every, it's just so good. It's, I'm telling you, Blind Vengeance, yeah. write it down, man. It's so good. I think I'm gonna look this up actually afterwards, yeah. Yeah, because he, he, he ends up in Reno to save this kid. So that's the basic, the only reference I have. Oh, I might throw an allusion to that in the film because I want, Reno's like famous for all the wrong reasons. What are the wrong reasons? Like, uh, you might've heard of Reno 911. Yes. Yes, the TV show, it's like all the cops from Reno. So I was thinking about putting those in the movie with like short shorts, like like the Reno 911 cops, like they'll be running around. Uh -huh. Like that's what, so um, Reno is also the divorce capital of the US. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like people come here to get divorced. Not only that, it's also the marriage capital. So it kind of goes some, like hand in hand. Like you can, there's a 24 hour, uh, like cancellation you get married at you can get married at any time of the day right now i could go oh, find shit. On the street and be like hey you want to go get married right now and then they could do it like and like be done in like 20 minutes holy shit <laughs> yeah exactly so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of material to play with that's why i keep choosing reno that's like just another day in reno if you've ever been to reno it's wacky like everyone here is like mm, like it's kind of an interesting vibe so it all makes sense if you've been like so people from reno are like oh that makes sense <laughs> like <laughs> i was like it <laughs> i was like uh it, does, it doesn't but it does like so it's people that have been to reno will get it and okay okay i i like that i like it. we're doing the same i like that it actually really works by the way like when you when you, not everybody has to understand it really works i like that no that's no I, I i knew that when i was making it too it was like no not a lot of people are gonna really actually know but it'd still be funny enough but um, so the film film though is like they're gonna find out like how Reno became to be. So they're gonna go like dig up Reno's past, and it's gonna be all like crazy like Indiana Jones, like the Ark or something, just like like some magical. It's still we're still working on like a lot of it. So, but it's gonna be like this very mythical element, and that's why like everybody's invited now because there's so much potential for like comedy and just like just crazy wackiness. That sounds like fun, man. I can't, I like, so do you have a, do you have a date or a time frame that you wanna? Oh, man. Like literally this is all concepts. Like I have, like I'm in, I think it's been about two months. I have somebody I'm working with and we're gonna start getting the scripts going. So, so it's gonna happen. It's just a matter of when, how, and. I, I <laughs> have, look, yeah. look, I have no doubt, Nick, seriously. Somebody like, I don't know, you see the focus that you have on what you're doing. I have no doubt it's going to happen. I cannot wait to see it and uh, brag about, oh, I once spoke to this guy. Hey, there you go, man. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. We'll see. Yeah. So I think it's going to be great. I don't know if I'm going to even cast myself in it or not. We'll see. But uh, another thing, I'll bring this up because it's also kind of important. It's kind of interesting is um, I wanted to make it about Reno as well because I wanted to make it a community project. So I wanted people from Reno like to get in on it and just have it all be like just a community project and then something that like everybody could be proud of that they all made together. So that's like another reason why, because then we'll also, I'll throw this out there, sponsorship helps as well that way because then it's also local and then, yeah, that's good though. Cause then not only that, now the local scene is being promoted and built up. So it kind of just like all, like comes together on itself and builds up from there yeah i mean it's a it's a it's a it's a far example but i i think new zealand and australia's tourism rose in thousands of percents after the, the lord of the rings right i so, wouldn't be surprised at all yeah like i want to go there because of lord of the rings so I'm, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> exactly. you should my friend uh, came back from there and he's like dude Dude, and we were young. Dude, dude. dude. <laughs> yeah. Everything is dude. All right, four questions. My favorite four questions. All right, and four answers. And I don't know, some people don't like the idea of a favorite. I do. I'm a very absolute person about that. Favorite action film, favorite action star, favorite action scene, and your favorite obscure hardly known action movie that you can recommend 
So I, that, this just changed for me recently uh -huh. because of, I don't know if you've seen anything everywhere all at once. Oh yeah. I just I, saw it last week. I love that movie. That's probably my favorite movie. Like I did everything about it. I love Michelle yep. Yeoh, like Andy Lee and his brother, Brian. I've been following them on Instagram for a while. Like their scene was hilarious. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to give away any of the movie, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, that whole that whole sequence is insane. Like all just philosophy and psychology and martial arts, like all the things I love. And I was like, this is easily my favorite movie, like ever. It's just all the things I love into one. It was so good. And Michelle Yeoh, I love her. So I've seen every single one of her movies. She's she's my favorite female actress. I will say that my favorite actress or my favorite actor and also action star both would probably have to be Sam Hung. So Donnie Yen's also up there, obviously Bruce Lee, Jet Li's great, Jackie Chan, but Sam Hung. It's, I don't know. He's just, yeah. Why, why specifically Sam Hung? Is, is there a reason or just because it's so likable? Sam Hung's just like a great actor like he could be like he didn't even need to do martial arts and he'd be like really interesting to watch he's just a really good actor and then let alone like i don't know if you've ever you've probably seen sam hung movie like he's insane and he's like just really big and doing yeah. like crazy stuff like flips like flipping on the chairs and like rolling down them like enter the fat dragon like that movie is great or knockabout <laughs> like man he's he's uh, one of the most unique athletes out there he, he had a stunt once, I remember. He did a flip into a car window. And he's not a small guy. Yeah. Like, how, and he was how so, covered. like, I mean, I, I don't know how many takes they had to do that, but I, I, can, I can definitely see what you're saying. He's a very unique, besides his expressive, expressive face, he's a very unique person. He's, like just, athlete. he's funny, too. He's funny. He can be serious. He, he has just range like I, I just like him a lot yeah uh, i get it he's like he reminds me of like my grandpa i never had <laughs> he's like a, <laughs> like grandpa almost like the way that he acts and everything so i don't know i like him a lot yeah and then um what so that was one and two what was uh three and four scene, again? your favorite action scene oh favorite action scene or one of them man I, yeah there's like a few probably Ip Man when he's fighting the Japanese soldiers for the rice that's probably one of them yeah I think that's probably my favorite action scene another one would be um like I think it's called uh SPO I think kill zone with Donnie Yen I think I watched it like there's when he a fights on the roof the, yeah the ending like yeah. the last that one was pretty good yeah uh, that was a crazy scene and then he falls off the of the of the of the roof right that's the guy the big the big uh, african-american guy with the beard might be i think it might be thinking of a different movie then if that's the case i'm pretty sure it's um it's the one where he's like doing mma and they're like in an abandoned oh house. he's a criminal and they're yeah and, yeah, yeah he falls through there yeah i know what you mean. a different movie maybe but that's like a 10 minute long like action fight scene and it's all like just MMA and like, man, that scene was crazy. I think uh, that's the scene when he starts bleeding off the nose when he just stands and the blood yeah, comes. Yeah. yeah, 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 I know what you mean. And then uh, I don't know if you saw that Donnie Yen's going to be in John Wick 4. That's going to be awesome. Yes. That's going to yes. be great. And then, um, so yeah, fight scene and then just. Favorite obscure action movie that very few people know that you want to recommend. Oh, there's a couple of them. I still think Knockabout with you and you and Biao. I think that's how you say his name, his last name. I think I heard about that movie. Knockabout. Yeah, Knockabout. That was pretty good. Um, oh, there's one with Michelle Yo. Uh she's like a pilot in it. Um Ah oh, man, I, I just watched it recently. That was so good. It's like her best movie. She's like literally like running over like roofs, like a whole entire village. She's like running on the roof and like beating up like the entire village, like pretty much like just <laughs> running around. And she's like super young in it. 
Magnificent Sisters? No. I'm gonna write it down. Michelle Yeoh fired five. She's she's a pilot. I yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That, yeah, that was a really good one. Obviously, everything everywhere all at once, though. I didn't want to repeat myself, so repeat yourself. Don't, I mean, don't, my, don't 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 think about it. I repeat myself constantly, especially on those questions. But I actually I actually thought you would say the the capoeira scene from uh, from um, Tom Yum Gong would be your favorite scene. Oh yeah, undisputed. That was a pretty good one Und with uh, Latif Crowder. Undisputed. Yeah, Boyka. That's what. Yeah, that's what, what you're talking about, right? No, no, no. Uh, Tom Yum Gong. This is a. The, it's the same guy, Latif, but he's in a movie called uh, uh, Tom Yum Gong, the Protector, with oh! Tony Jaa when they steal yep. his elephant. Oh, yep, yep. I know what you're talking about. Yep. Yeah, it's an amazing story. That scene that he he got injured in the middle of one of the moves. So in the middle, they had to bring somebody else to continue the scene. That's why you see half of the scene, it's him, and the other half, it's not him. And they had to cut it short and bring uh, the sword guy. Oh, I don't man. remember his name. That That's like one of the most beautifully shot capoeira, like usage of capoeira. Oh, yeah. Latif Crowder is awesome. I don't know if you've seen Warrior. Yes. Series. They have some capoeira in there that was like, really well done it was actually like really real he like wrapped his leg around the guy's head and i was like oh i've seen that move before and like got him like really good and i was like man that was actually really real was, like capoeira right there that was awesome really it wasn't like only the strong i i haven't seen that yet i just <gasps> bought it it's in the mail like literally i have it in the mail like being sent to me right now as we speak it's the capoeira like, guys look down upon you and they're no, angry, man, and they're they're angry. angry. They stop playing the beer and bow. <laughs> yeah, no more beer and bow for no, you. No, basically, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's literally on the way. Like, right, I like bought it earlier this week, like online. I was like, man, I gotta see this movie. So. Dude, Mark the Cascos there is so awesome. The whole movie is just brilliant. It's so it's dangerous minds with capoeira. That's <sighs> oh, it's so, so good. Cool. You like, you're gonna I, love it. Yeah. I'm not gonna tell you anything else. But you're gonna love it, and you might might see some influence from it then <laughs> coming up. <laughs> well, you should. It's it's great. It's very it's very cheesy. Again, it's very cheesy. It's an old. Oh, those are the best nice. ones, though. The best cheesy ones have the best martial arts. I've noticed. I don't know why that is. Because it's it's the usage of force to that, and the good and the very very clear understanding of who's good and who's bad. Because in cheesy movies there is no gray area. There is the good and there is the bad. That makes sense. Yeah. And when you put in it the the physical element and the proper storytelling, you really want you are waiting to see the physical element takes part in executing the the good against the bad. Right. I don't know if I make sense in what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. Oh, totally, totally. Um, I just for some reason that made me think of this other movie. Uh, do you know? Iko Uwais is. Yeah. So I was like, I'm so bad with these movie names, but uh, it's a movie about his teacher. And like, it's just super cheesy, like cheese ball. But then like his teacher starts doing stuff and you're like, whoa, like this is some of the best martial arts I've ever seen on film, like ever. You could probably look up Iko Uwais teacher, teacher's movie. But uh, it's seriously like such good martial arts. It's insane. I was like, this is how martial arts, like this is real martial arts. Like, I don't know how else to put it. Like it wasn't like watered down or Hollywood or anything. It was just straight, just, they're just filming him doing martial arts. Like, <laughs> like almost wasn't even a movie. That's interesting. That's interesting. But man, it was, it was so good. It was a... Uh, I don't think it's C lot, but uh, like Eco Wise, his martial arts. Isn't uh, it? Isn't it C lot Filipino? Is it, is it? No, it's Indonesian, but it might be. I don't think it's C lot. Um, it's like an Indonesian style. It's so good though. The guy is so good. The raid. Oh, the first yeah. one especially. Both both of them are great though. 
Um, the second one is a bit over the top. It's too over the top. There isn't, it's too much. It's too much. It's like there's so much happening. There's so much going on. I mean, they're, they're kind of, they're trying to follow the first one and make it as good, but Joe Taslam as well. Joe Taslam is really good, and he was in, yeah. he was in the second one, so it was harder to do without, like, the actors because Joe Taslam is a great actor and yeah. martial artist. Yeah, is that the is that the guy with the curly hair? Uh, Joe Taslam, he's a Sub Zero in Mortal Kombat. He was he was also. Oh yeah, yeah, I know who you mean. Yeah. I know who you mean. I know who. How good was that fight between Sub Zero and uh, and Scorpion in the first ten minutes of that movie? Right, that movie was awesome. I was, I like that movie a lot. Really? I mean, it wasn't like my favorite movie, but like just for the timing as well as during COVID. So like. It kind of people needed something like that but i i was so mad watching that movie man i, I watched really? that movie and i was so mad i'm like i watched it 10 minutes and it's like so good it's so good that then he watches the rest it's like where did it all go i mean you're not wrong like they were setting it up for the sequel more so it yeah because like, like deadpool like i thought deadpool the first one was like Meh, but it was like set it was like introducing deadpool the second one i, I thought deadpool 2 was hilarious i thought it was great like First one, I think the th they're doing the same thing with Mortal Kombat. There's kind of like for new people, they're like, oh, here's what Mortal Kombat is. Like, hey, all the masses, come check out Mortal Kombat and like kind of packaged it for like everybody. And then that way they can open it up when the sequel comes out. Well, I can't wait to see Johnny Cage again on screen. I know. <laughs> That's another one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited for that too. <laughs> Dude, it's been so fun talking to you, man. Like, I probably can talk to you about movies and this kind of stuff, like, until until we're both dehydrated or something. I know, yeah. I mean, I love talking about it, too, obviously. So, yeah, same. So, thank you. Uh, again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, continue doing what you're doing. Like, hearing you talking about your schedule and your dedication is inspiring. And I, I honestly cannot wait to see what you're going to do next, man. I appreciate that, man. That's what it's all for right there. So thank you. Hoo!